So just as a contrast to the uh, last video that I put out about a Kickstarter MMORPG that's never getting funded, uh, this is one that's popped up on the radar that may get funded. So this is called Legend of Gon Gondwana. Uh, not sure that how that I like the name that much, to be honest. Not amazing. But this is being funded to the tune of £13,500. It's got 25 days left to go. And they've raised 800 already. So likelihood of it getting funded is, you know, it, it, it could do. It could do. And they've actually done some work on this game compared to the other game, which literally was like two character two characters that didn't even have textures in a completely barren landscape. And that's what they've shown in their trailer. These have got actual uh, gameplay to show. They've apparently been working on the game for multiple years. And realistically... It doesn't look too crazy so so what i what i think when i look at a kickstarter project a crowdfunded project in general if it doesn't look like it's the most that it's trying to be the most the most revolutionary best next gen triple a mmorpg but on the budget and experience of like a, a group of small friends then then i'm more inclined to give it more of an opportunity just because realistically this could be made now when somebody says, oh, we want £13,000 to make a game, that obviously sets off alarm bells because thirteen grand is, is, is nothing. It's nothing in, in the large picture. It's nothing in the small picture. When you're developing a game, thirteen grand does not do anything. But, but I will say as a caveat, if you've already been doing work on the game privately with no money invested from, from the public for, for multiple years and you're getting close to having a finished project, but you need a couple you know some money to buy some stuff or maybe you need some money to get a contractor on to do a couple months worth of work on a on a specific area of the game it does it does make sense and it can it can go that way i've seen small teams make mmos that were really good on a complete shoestring budget is it the likeliest scenario no of course it's not but we're not talking about that we're talking about the merits of what they've done so far so let's take a look give everything the opportunity it deserves so already the world looks not not too good the textures are a little bit washed out like the colors are a little bit uh uninspired character customization looks serviceable i mean you can you can customize your character combat looks ass interface looks looks ass uh, but but what do, what do you expect with this stage of development? Kind of reminds me of the interface for Profall, you know, with the like black and white icons. Like it just yeah, that interface looks kind of like Crowfall to me for some reason. Like, this is my problem with, with Kickstarter MMOs in general. And I know most people are already completely out and, and they're just not interested as soon as you mention something's Kickstarter or crowdfunded. But my problem is with stuff like this, the game doesn't look like the worst piece of shit ever. It looks like it could eventually maybe turn into something that would be fairly fun to play. The problem is, why pay for something that looks and like looks and what i presume feels like this like a super early just rigid uh bare bones game when there's already stuff out there that probably fulfills the same gap that this is aiming for but it's already done uh, it might not be a very popular game it, it, you might be playing something that only has a couple hundred players on the server or or maybe less than that but it already exists and you don't have to take a risk to get into it that's my problem like you're walking it you're walking a thin line you walk walking a tight tight rope uh, when it comes to games like this because as i said in the previous video with stuff like titan reach realistically being a game that could be made that's something that you can only really play titan reach or runescape old school runescape because there's no games that fit that niche that are new uh, so they've got an audience, they've got a, a, somewhere where I can see it fitting in, and the gameplay loop's not that hard to do. It's not a game that I think would take millions of dollars to make and would be super ridiculously difficult and would require like so many tenured developers. But the on the inverse of that, it's not 
that interesting because we've already got something very similar to it so that's the the double-edged sword of it it can work but it's not that interesting it, for me it is but for the overall uh player base probably not that much the overall community this the problem with stuff like this th i can't see an audience for this and it's not that interesting that's the problem like they've not leaned too far in either direction this is not anything too crazy it's realistically could be made uh, but it's it's just not that interesting at least unless i'm missing something it just looks completely cookie cutter bog standard so uh, it's a multiplayer rpg with a mythical ancient story with science fiction elements to offer players a new experience of visions for a world and new legends based on long forgotten lore at the heart of the game is the story and we want every, pl every player to feel as though their actions are making a difference to the struggle that gondwana faces uh, gondwana is one of the oldest plants in the universe of Argatica and is the only source of extremely rare and valuable herbs that enhance abilities. You're a member of a secret organization who, whose quest is to save the inhabitants of the planet from invaders. That's kind of cool, I guess. So it's like a cross between a fantasy world and an alien invasion. Kind of a cool concept. I don't hate it. Uh, it's just the problem is, is that the game looks like how it looks. The game offers spell, a spellbinding storyline, a variety of PvE events, PvP modes, guild systems, pet and mount system, as well as deep social element. So th that doesn't really tell us anything. That doesn't really explain to us why we'd fund this game over others. So PvP, this will be a big thing. The thrill of risk, uh, the thrill and risk of random player versus player combat can take center stage in your adventure. Or if you prefer player versus environment, then you can have that opinion uh, option too. Our game also has player versus player battlefield where you can show off your skills and fighting spirit. Since some players don't like questing or grinding, the PvP field is one of the many ways to level up if PvE content isn't for you. A Legend of Gondwana, you have the freedom to decide what you want to do. With safe zones located around the world, you have the chance to battle a threatening player or take some time to hone your skills. So, it's a little bit... The combat system supports regular attacks, blocks and critical hits. Players can take challenge, can take challenge enemies as well as fellow players. Yeah, so it doesn't really... Nothing in this really jumps out at me as being uh, NPC trading, player-to-player -player trading. I mean, I do like that player-to-player -player trade. It's, it's fucking sad that in 2021, I see player-to-player -player trading, and I'm like, yeah, I like that. Because it, it, it's so many MMOs nowadays just completely remove this aspect of, like, a player economy or trading between players, and they've all gone this route of, like, World of Warcraft and BDO where... Pretty much everything's bound like there's obviously trading in wow but how often do you trade with another human almost never it's all done through the auction house it's nameless it's faceless it's not like it used to be uh where there was people interacting with each other and the fact that gear's untradeable for the most part kind of kills the mmo aspect a little bit for me i'm not sure how you guys feel about it but i'm a bigger fan of of being able to trade things whether you need them anymore or not i don't think i should be able should have to do a raid get something and then eventually just delete it it should still retain some kind of value but in i understand in certain games that's just what they're going for and how they reinforce the gameplay loop wow is already kind of like fringing on being a pay to winnable game because you can buy tokens and then you can turn tokens to gold and then you can trade that gold to like the mythic top guild in the world and they'll run you through the fucking dungeon get you all the achievements give you all the best gear in the game but imagine if it was all unbound and you could trade it you could just buy tokens and buy gear so it's the same outcome you're just skipping a step and i understand why mmos don't want that in their game and just being able to buy all the gear but for me as soon as you remove elements of social interaction to combat something that will never ever go away and no one's ever figured out how to remove you're kind of fucking your game up just for the sake of uh, something that that you've not fixed and I know for some games, obviously, that's not the reason. And they just don't want you trading gear. But for me, trading gear is is a big thing in games that I do really, really miss. I miss getting an upgrade and being able to sell my other item and, and continue on with the game. Obviously, in BDO, you can sell all your items, which is cool. I do like that, and it's a stark contrast. But the fact that there's no player-to-player -player trading, so you can give people stuff... That fucking bothers me to no end, because a social game is supposed to be social, and MMOs are supposed to be the social game type. But that's a complete aside, a complete random rant that's nothing to do with this. But yeah, just talking about this project, 
it could get funded it, it absolutely could i went through some of this earlier uh, they basically said they've been working on the game for two years there's two brothers working on the game and they they don't explain as far as i'm aware what they're going to use the money for unless i've completely missed that but they said that they've been working in the, the space for 20 years they've made a bunch of different games a bunch of different apps uh, a bunch of different software projects so they're, they're probably tenured they probably know what they're doing but again it's you're asking for 13 grand for for an mmo it just it's beggar's belief it's it's really weird um so yeah there's only the core team so that's uh, sylvester and emise is completed by three other contributors and they don't really explain what they're doing uh, so yeah it's it's just a weird amount of money to ask for a project and what you're going to do with it and it's it's not a very inspired game but that's it that's legend of Gondwa gondwana i fucking hate that name Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.